Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Real Estate Lab podcast. Today, we're coming to you to talk about short-term rentals. And we have a guest today who has a few of them in the Austin, Texas area, and he's going to share his story. Uh, we are having some technical technical difficulties, so he's going to end up being joining us uh, via audio on JJ's phone. So let's go around the room and introduce ourselves uh, before we get started. I go by Ian of Austin everywhere on the internet. Excited to have you here today. Hello, everybody. I'm Liberty Walker. And yeah, short-term rentals. I have so many questions. That's good. Let's dive hey, in. everybody. JJ Tolentino with the Next Level Property Group at KW. Interested to talk about short-term rentals because this helps y'all with your real estate investing. And so mm -hmm. it's going to have real estate wealth. So I'm going to introduce Tom through my phone because, again, like Ian said, we're having technical difficulties. Go ahead, Tom, introduce yourself. Elevator Hi, pitch, Tom. I'm Tom with Pure Realty in Cedar Park and Round Rock. And I'm a realtor, but I also own three short-term rentals, which may be a little bit different from what you're expecting, but we'll talk about that. That's what's exciting. I'm excited to hear that. So don't forget, you can find us on Spotify, Amazon, Google, every other podcasting app that you're watching. So why don't we go ahead and start with um, just like what is a S We hear STR a lot. What are your traditional definitions of STRs? Liberty, JJ, Tom, anybody? What are you first thinking thing that when comes somebody to says my short term? Mind, first thing that comes to my mind, Ian, is Airbnb and, mm -hmm. you know, VRBO. And yes. I mean, those are the two main ones I can think of. Well, what kind of property do you think of when you think of an Airbnb property? I mean, I think of maybe like, I mean, in my experience, it can really be any kind of property. It could be a single family home. It can be an apartment. It can be a casita. It can even be a room inside of a home. So the possibilities are endless there, Ian. A boat, a mattress in the backyard, you name it. <laughs> yeah. I saw this lady. I think we had talked about it in one podcast. I saw this lady. She posted her whole house. So it was a four bedroom house. She was like, you could either A, rent the whole house, or B, rent all four of the rooms individually and the couch. So she had six listings on Airbnb. I was like, that is genius. Genius. Can you imagine somebody renting a couch for, let's say it's $100 a night to couch surf, but it's right downtown where you could go to ACL? Sounds like a lot of coordinating. Well, but the app does that. That's what makes it cool. So, um, okay, so I think investors been, are really... I've never been a host personally, but I know you have, Ian. I, I've heard you, your self-proclaimed super host, right, Ian? I am. I, I was a super host. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. JJ, what do you think? Yeah, exactly what y'all are talking about. I think it could be a, a super creative situation. And I'm interested to hear about Tom because Tom has his fair share if you want to talk about your airbnb background tom yeah sure we and all of you we've stayed in a number of airbnb properties in different locations i can't hear him. i can't hear him uh, condo studios uh, part of a house whatever but um, in our case we have three of them now they're all in round rock and two of them are single family three three bedroom homes the other is a two bedroom. Okay, so why did you choose single family homes? Can you explain that process in Round Rock, especially? Well, initially, when I saw the first one, I was just looking for a just a long term rental mm -hmm. uh, to buy a year and a half ago and walked into this home. And the way it was updated is a charming. Uh, older 1977 home. The way it was updated and the way it was laid out just struck me that this is a great 
uh, Airbnb type situation and because of its location and a number of other things. And so we, uh, we got it under contract and we had begun to buy furniture and COVID hit. So the, the uh, short term, at least uh, for a while, the um, uh, vacation rental uh, boom kind of withered on the vine here for a little while. So what we decided to do is, is go ahead and furnish it, go ahead and, and uh, set it up. But rather than vacation rental, we uh, lease it out for anywhere from two to six or even longer months, however long it takes for someone that needs to be there. I think y'all are muted. Oh yeah, there we go. So there are a lot of people that are, that's a genius niche because there's so many people that are, that are moving here that are buying houses, but the houses are going to take a few months for them to, to be able to move in. And the builders can't tell you a definite closing date. Right. So I've had multiple people where they said, Oh, you're, it's going to be closing. And mm -hmm. so now you're serving that part of the market with your, short-term rental so it's not a traditional airbnb or a vrbo like most people are thinking yeah it's i mean timeline and in my realtor experience i had a number of clients in that situation where they were in between homes needed some place to go for two or three months um many times they have pets they have dogs they need or would really prefer uh, a fenced yard mm -hmm. and uh, with more people working from home or and and uh, going to school from home they need more than just a hotel suite. So uh, it really has worked out really well and there has been a demand for this type of property. Now ex explain, that is incredible. Go ahead, Liberty. I was just gonna say also like people moving here for a job and also they wanna be in the city while they search for a home. So important to be able to have a place to stay. So that's awesome. JJ, yeah, that's do you ever do that? Do you ever? Very nice. Do you ever recommend to your clients that they check out an, an Airbnb in an area before they buy in that area? Yeah, I say uh, rent where you would own and own where you would rent. Great advice. That's really clean. And Heather, Tom, what's, H yeah, you want to read the comment? HJ goes, uh, STR sounds like a better option to an apartment when you're waiting for your home to be built. It absolutely can be uh, because they're a little more, I'll say a little more flexible. If you just wanted a three month, that's fine. And you get more space. The downside becomes, uh, uh, the downside becomes if you need to extend it and they already have someone else ready to go, just like an apartment. And also the costs, but people are willing to pay for those convenience costs. Can someone talk about those convenience costs of renting yeah, Tom, uh, short Tom, term? Can you, can you speak to the, the cost versus a traditional 12 month lease and a short term rental? What, what's the price difference in that? Could you estimate? Well, of course, understand that the, the short term rental is furnished and that increases the value of that rental quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, and, a, and typically there's a premium on a short term lease as well, even if somebody wants to rent an unfurnished home or an apartment for uh, less than a year, then they pay a premium for that. So uh, there's a premium to be paid for both the fact that it's furnished and the fact that it's short term. Um, but under the circumstances, uh, you know, the people we found are willing, more than willing to pay those convenience fees and those higher prices. Yes, I I would, I would be because <laughs> it's just, I choose convenience over headache 100% of the time. Let me, so if, yeah. if someone came with their own furniture, would you remove your furniture for them? Oh, no. No, they would need to find a home where they could lease for a short term in an unfurnished situation that's a great question and i'm pondering that right now because we have another home under contract and i'm trying to decide if we're going to lease it out after we own it as a short as just a regular long-term unfurnished rental or like we have these others furnished short term or we might consider a uh, a short-term unfurnished but i'm not sure what kind of demand there is for that at this point If Where somebody wanted to send people 
short-term rentals. Like, is there a group that organizes terminals? Liberty, is, is that chopping up for you, Ian? Yeah, yeah I think Liberty is asking uh, where to find tenants for short-term rentals. Like th that question addressed to me? Yeah. We're, I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, we'd like to hear your because experience. I'm a realtor, yeah, because I'm a realtor, we list them on MLS. And, um, and then I also typically go to Facebook pages and uh, our own Pure Realty um, page. And the way I market them is uh, be your client's hero. Uh, we almost market exclusively to uh, realtors and um be your client zero because if somebody's moving in from out of state which is typically the situation and that person needs a place like this and the realtor can find it and uh it really puts a feather in the cap of the realtor who's going to ultimately find a home for them to buy in this area i've had multiple clients that have asked me if i know of anything that's going to be around for just three months while the builder is building and sometimes I'll see these posts and I try to research them, but it's really, it's been challenging. So th that comes to my next question. If someone, wa let's say someone was told, you know, your house will be done by January 1st, but then it's done by November. How do you handle that type of situation? Well, we never lease it until we know that the person before is moving out. I don't think it's at all fair if we would tell the current tenant that, hey, <laughs> I don't know, care what your situation is, but you got to be out of here in 30 days. We just don't do that. We've had one no, situation I, where because of just what you talked about, builders um, are uh, construction is delayed so much that it's it was four or five additional months and we were fine to leave them, let them stay there for that additional time. I was more I, I'm, that's great. I was more referring to if the tenant, uh, the build was done early and the tenant wanted to break the lease. Uh, or, yeah, if they just wanted to escape the lease a little bit early, like a reletting fee. Well, we what we've been doing is a two-month lease with a month-to-month -month extension after that, which gives them the flexibility. I, I, we really would like a thirty-day notice so we can market it the next time. But um, we're pretty flexible with allowing people to, to leave uh, if they need to leave sooner. That is so, that is just like a peace of mind for people. You know, it's really a wonderful thing you're doing, Tom. What about, can we talk a little bit about, um, are you, for other people that might be watching that are investors, what, what things, where would you guide them to find rules and regulations? Because I know some of my clients ask me, oh, this home is so great. It would make a great investment property for short-term rentals. Can I use this for Airbnb? And I'm like, well, how do we find that out? Is it HOA restrictions, city restrictions? What do you do, Tom, to do your due diligence on a property? Well, those are the are the two big ones for sure. Uh, since we've stayed in Round Rock, we we haven't had any issues with that. And then the HOA is a big deal, so. Um, it's best to either look for a home that's not an HOA, which is getting more difficult all the time, or to at least carefully research the uh, HOA rules. Because there's one subdivision in particular that we looked at uh, with newer homes, and the HOA rules said that they would not allow rentals less than 12 months. That's pretty tough. So um, that subdivision didn't work for what we wanted to do, and it definitely would not work in an Airbnb situation. Yeah, that's such a good point. I've, I've seen that, uh, especially a lot of the brand new communities um, while they're still building out, especially if they have multiple phases going on. So, so you're looking for properties that are not in an HOA if possible. How do people get a hold? Let's say they are in an HOA. How are you helping people get a hold of uh, the CCNRs or whatever the regulations of that H that um, HOA is before they're offering on that home? Yeah, well, that can be a little tricky. Uh, HOAs, as you, I'm sure you know, are a little difficult to, to get that information. Sometimes the CCRs are right posted on the HOA website or the manager's website, but often that's not the case. 
And then you either need the help from either contacting that um, HOA directly or uh, many times um, title companies have access to mm. that information or can kind of get you in so that you can get that information in plenty of time to make a decision. Here, here's what I know. I know that title companies have seen all of the HOAs, all of the guidelines, and they've received it. I don't know any title companies that'll be like, you know what, I'll send it to you, Ian. All you got to do is just tell me which HOA you want to know about. <laughs> that would make my life so much easier. Liberty, what do you have pulled up here? What do you have pulled up here on the screen? Yes, yeah, uh, so these, these are the yeah. different types of properties for short-term rentals defined by austintexas.gov. So we have type one where the owner is occupying the property. It's a single family, multifamily or duplex. So they are on the deed and they can prove that. And then they can apply for a license to become a short-term rental. Then we have type two, which is maybe a tenant that's living inside of a home and then renting out their property. So there's different restrictions for that. One of these that I'm going to that I'm going to point out to you guys about type two. So if you're leasing a property, you're not the owner, you're not on the deed, but you are interested in doing a short term rental of the home that you're occupying. There can only be one type two non owner occupied short term rental in a 1000 um, foot radius. So that's almost a mile around the property. I've, that's a lot of homes if it's a neighborhood. Well, they are trying to minimize. I think I think some neighborhoods are trying to minimize it, but it so is that there's so much to this. There are a lot of people that don't like the idea. So imagine if you moved in, you just bought a house for a million dollars on a street where all the other houses are a million dollars, and then someone buys it, rents it out, and it becomes a, a college party house. I mean, that's happened. This is real, right? Or, like, or bachelorette. And, or bachelorette, yeah, something like that. Like, how does that affect the neighborhood? Tom, have you have had any kind of, probably not. Can you tell us uh, about your experience with that? And this goes for everybody, all of us. JJ? Well, you? my experience is, especially with the unique way we're doing this, we haven't had any problems with parties at all because these folks are, you know, they, they've been homeowners, they're just a, a single family. Uh, they typically don't have parties. They typically don't have a lot of guests come in. Uh, many times they're just new to town anyway. So it's really a different type of situation. That's one of the benefits, I guess you could say, of what we're doing. Um, but I know that that doesn't speak to the majority of STRs, which really are Airbnb weekend type situations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's yeah. shifting, though, especially with the announcement, you know, the... <laughs> announcement of tesla's hq moving here we knew that tesla was moving here samsung all these people but now seeing knowing that all these people these jobs are coming here and people will need to rent these are engineering jobs you can't work remote if you're if you're physically here manufacturing or building something so they need a place to stay and very rapidly so this is an excellent excellent option would y'all happen to know like is there a market that's better for short term rentals like is is this is this you know four month less than one year super hot does that make sense is it competitive i think you mean is now a good time to buy one is that what you're saying yeah like, like if you were an investor scared. and you were considering doing a short term like purchasing for short term do you think it's yeah. a bad time or a good time is that what you're asking yeah i absolutely would not be scared of doing it right now um, you know, our, our market values are still rising. They will continue to do that. And like you mentioned about the demand for people coming in and, and jobs and coming in quickly and needing to uh, get into a place before they buy, if they choose to buy, I think it's an excellent time. I, I love the idea of this under a year, but not a weekend. Because it's like, it really does kind of, it's like you have all the benefits of a long-term lease in terms of like, fan, you know, uh, someone occupying the home that might not just be having a party. 
but you also have the flexibility because the market is changing, rents are changing. And so you're not locked in for a whole year at that rental rate. You kind of move it around as you wish. Yeah. And even as John S says, I wish we would have known about this option. We had to extend our short-term lease twice now because of delays. Our apartment management has increased our rent by six fifty. Increased John, our rent by six fifty. And John, you'd really have to crunch the numbers there because you know, as we're talking about, there is going to be a premium with a short-term rental, but it might not. We don't know if that six fifty would would benefit you, you know, going into a, a short-term rental or not. But definitely hurts seeing your rent go up that much. Yeah, that sucks, dude. Sorry about that, John. Hey, well, now, now you hey, know. Tom. You need a Tom, here. <laughs> Tom, how long is it taking for you to turn over a, a property? So let's say you had a tenant notify you today they're moving out and it's what, October 15th. Uh, how long would it take you to get another tenant in, do you think? Well, if we have, I mean, if, if they're out today and we don't know until today, then it's a little tricky because we have to market it. The, the tricky part of this is finding trying to find the next tenant who can move in as quickly as possible after the most recent tenant moves out. We only need a day or two to turn it around in terms of getting it cleaned up and laundered and everything like that. But um, uh, sometimes we've been very fortunate so far in not having much uh, vacant period of time. In fact, generally it's only days between one tenant and the next, but at any given time, you don't know how many people are going to be available for it. So um, that part's a little bit tricky, but we can turn it around pretty quick. And I try to get it on MLS as quickly as possible. You've never really had a dry spell, right? Never had no, a what? A dry spell. A dry spell. All right, Kel Varnson says, new communities like Whisper Valley have BTR proposed. What's BTR? A, um, rent, something something term BTR rental. proposed for future development. Short term rentals might be possible there, but not in normal owner occupied phases. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. New. So when he's talking they're about, really, they're really making a an effort to keep some homes available for people who do live here and and need to work here. So I, you know, I'm. One point I'm like, for my investors, I'm like, oh, why can't we buy that new home? On, on the other point, I'm like, I really would like to have a place for some people to buy and live in. So I can see both sides of the coin on that one. So yeah, I want to I wanna talk about this comment for a minute. So he says it's build to rent. So what happens is you have a lot of investors that are saying, no, are, sorry, a lot of new communities, and they're saying we're not allowing investors. That's not necessarily true. What they're saying instead is, we're only allowing, let's say, five or ten percent investors, but they're they're like a silent auction type period, right? Like you're not going to know that unless you're always calling builders and trying to find that. So uh, it, it's really hard to find that, and or or if a home has been sitting on the market a little bit longer. And what he's referring to when he says the uh, the normal owner occupied phases, we know that if there's a community build out, let's say it's going to be twenty phases, they'll do. A thousand homes and then they'll work on the next thousand homes and then they'll work on the next thousand homes where each phase so the first phase that might be fully occupied with owners before they move on to the next so he's saying future phases maybe phase six in whisper valley as an example and that's just arbitrary number but uh that's that's what he's referring to for those of you that uh, that are watching this let me poke some holes at this is, is it possible that an str investor may be left holding the bag because all this future development comes or like apartment complexes come up what do you think tom well no more so than any other type of investor that i guess the challenge is if we decided to sell one of ours uh what a lot of short-term investors don't think about is the furniture and the furnishings. First of all, it takes a while to buy all this stuff. <laughs> and and um, because you have to furnish it from head to toe. I mean, what we tell people is everything is there except your toothbrush and a suitcase. Mm -hmm. um, because we're, we're, we're furnishing it with everything. So what that means is on the exit side is if we chose to sell one of these, 
we would either have to sell it as a working short-term rental or we would have to somehow dispose of all the furniture mm -hmm. and the furnishings. And so that's where I think uh, the, the risk of holding the bag would come in. That makes sense. That's something to consider because those are that's thousands of dollars, right? Yes. <laughs> and there's Have a lot of people homes because if somebody, especially from out of town, an out of town investor wanted to buy a short term rental, it's obviously much easier to buy one that's already functioning that way. And they are available, but they're pretty few and far between. Mm -hmm. Right on. Exit strategy is what I've heard. <laughs> Think about an exit strategy if you're thinking about SDRs. Tom, when you're looking at properties, do you check the percental percent rental rate in the neighborhood before you purchase? Well, as another investor, yes, I do. I always run those numbers to see what the percent is, but typically the neighborhoods that I'm looking at for investment already have a decent percentage of renters. And so in, in my case, it's more of looking at the neighborhood, uh, driving down the streets than it is being concerned about the percent of renters since I'm the property that I'm buying is going to be a rental property. So if the, pro so if the property, let's say the neighborhood itself has, let's say 300 homes, and uh, 200 of them are rentals. That doesn't mean anything to you? As an investor, no. And of course, that's an extreme number because I don't know of any neighborhoods that have that percentage. But I'm, I mean, I, I get the point. Um, I, I think it just depends on, you know, we can all drive through a neighborhood and we can tell, is this neighborhood trending up or is it trending down? And to me, that's and, and, and that's a subjective thing. It's not an objective thing, but um, that's more what we look at. I love the way you said that trending up or trending down, not good or bad or anything like that. And that's important knowing that we're realtors because we can't do that. So uh, like you have to be able, like you said, it's subjective to the person. One person might think it's an incredible neighborhood and another person might say, uh, I wouldn't live here for whatever reason. So that's, Trending upward or trending. I'm going to borrow that, Tom. Do you have any thoughts for an investor that that's more, or do you think there's a market for both of these? I mean, I think it's, it's tough for me as a realtor to comp using the MLS, which is very long-term rental data, sales data. But do you, could you, would y'all think, short 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 term is like better more profitable or safer or you know uh medium term you know with the let me six months. let me say one thing uh kind of before tom answers this because i'm sure his answer is going to be better than mine uh when we were doing the airbnbs one i didn't i specifically wanted to do an airbnb or a short term right a super short term because if i didn't like the thought of a particular uh, scenario, it was an instant switch, yeah, right? Like it was only going to last uh -huh. a, a week or whatever. And, yeah. and then, so that was the first thing. Second, you can like, as realtors, we're not allowed to discriminate at all. Right. And so I'm like, I'm not going to put this on the MLS and then sit here and pick through renters or anything. like personally, that's how I didn't want to do it. So yeah. I always think I'm going to have a property manager do it. And that's a whole process, yada, yada, yada. So anyway, um, I think, I think that's, something to consider when you're looking at very, very short versus a long term. But like Tom said, his experience has been very, very different. You have any thoughts, Liberty? I honestly am leaning towards Tom's model. It really does kind of sound like it's geared towards kind of like a maybe people who are just like needing a place to live versus needing a place to partay. <laughs> I don't want to clean up after <laughs> those people. <laughs> yes. But also if Tom just needed a place to go and party and not uh, have to worry about his own house, he could do that too. <laughs> what do you think, Tom? Are you happy with your strategy? You considered anything, uh, the, the shorter, shorter term? Well, we've thought about it and honestly, on weekends like F1 or ACL or a home football game and some of the things you wonder, boy, we could get a lot more out of this home this weekend than, uh, you know, probably in two weeks of a regular rental or maybe even more than that. But 
um, for the time being, we'll stick with our strategy. Uh, the, the neat thing is we could convert it to a VRBO at any time. I've, mm-hmm. I'm set up VRBO. I haven't pulled a plug on it, but I've got, I've got the properties there. I've got pictures in place. And so we could decide to go that direction at any moment. Well, if you do, you'll have to update us and keep us posted because we're looking to you for guidance on this one. Sounds like you are far beyond what we've been up to in terms of the longer rentals. I love that. So everybody, it is 301. We thank you for spending the time with us today. Sorry we're over time. Uh, If you have any questions for Tom, JJ, Liberty, or myself, feel free to leave them in the comments. We'll make sure to address them uh, either today or tomorrow or sometime in the near near future. And we will see you again next week. This has been the real estate. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you.